I don't like it. It's a mess. I'm not wild about it. I think it's really dangerous. I think it's going to cause wrecks. That's what I think. Six months after it opened to traffic and just weeks before construction is finally complete. Until University of South Alabama student Olivia McArthur. It took us 52 days to solve a 38 year old crime and we did. A forensic anthropology major got involved. We told the sheriff's department that she was a daughter of a Heinrich boy and a Clemens girl. And that's how they found who she was. There are several things inside the Oakley house that grab your attention and send chills down your spine the moment you walk through the hall. Like the portraits of historical mobile figures that line the wall. Their eyes seem to follow every move you make. Juilliard only takes 12 males and 12 females a year. Turner spent hours a week dancing at Davidson High School, Mobile Ballet, and Sheffield School of Dance. I remember having to put this on applications. I think it was somewhere around like 36-ish hours. A week? Yes. A 10-hour day is a regular thing for him. He lines up trucks that transport products shipped into the state docks. But back in November, COVID hit him and put the brakes on his everything. It's the weirdest feeling I've ever felt. I don't ever want to feel it again. He was hospitalized and almost didn't make it. The three teachers tell me that while they appreciate the accolades, they say it's the difference they get to make in the classroom every single day that is their greatest reward. And when you talk to experts, the most important factor when it comes to the job interview has to do with your appearance. Because let's face it, no matter what you say or how you say it, you're just not going to get hired when you show up looking like this. What's up? Instead, pay attention to that old adage, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. When Coach Deerman put the post on Facebook about needing baseball equipment, it went viral. Within a few days, the post had been shared 1,200 times and donations started pouring in from around the country. You might be wondering if you've never even put on boxing gloves before. If this is a class for you, Coach Pat says yes. Shot after shot, hitting the target. Bullseye. Bullseye. <laughs> These aren't experienced marksmen. These ladies are picking up a gun for the first time. I didn't even want to hold it to bring it here. The gun. That's how scared I am of them. I feel a little nervous. I don't know if my hands are shaking. This is my first time, too. You're going to do fine. These ladies aren't alone. More and more women are buying guns. I'm pretty nervous. Yeah, I'm very nervous. My heart's racing right now. I always start every class with the rules. You're going to cradle the gun. Instructor Melissa Rankins. So Devin, pull your index finger up underneath the tree. Yes, ma'am. Started her business called okay, She's a Pistol. You're going to put your mountain in your valley. There you go. And let go of it. Got That's it. it. Got it. That's it. This is a ginormous gun, and girl, you are in control of it. To help women learn to shoot. I'll see the women lining up to buy guns, and it really does unnerve me a little bit because I want them to to receive the proper training. I decided to take a class. This is a great grip. You've got these two dots in the back, your rear sight, and then you have this one dot in the front, your front sight. To see just how involved firearms training can be. And you're gonna make sure that your sights are equal in height. Turns out, it takes training to know what you're doing and to carry with confidence, knowing you're safe. There's nothing normal about an explosion going off in our hands. And I tell my clients that you're gonna get jittery. From how to properly hold the pistol. Good two-handed grip. Shoulder width apart. To the right stance. Bend at your waist. To how to line up the gun for the shot. Many of us. Hold on to it. Like Leslie Baggett, we're shaking. I wanted the knowledge and to be comfortable around the gun because I'm extremely uncomfortable. You and I are gonna step up to the three yard line right here. But she and others were ready to learn how to fire off some rounds the correct way. As a trained law enforcement officer, finger off the trigger, come back to ready gun. Rankin says she started training classes when women asked her for help. Many weren't comfortable with men getting so physically close while learning technique. Being up here and putting hands on her, like, you know, bend at your waist, engage your target, and helping her with her grip, it's not uncomfortable for a woman to be helping a woman to do that. We learned that to fire the gun the right way, you need to have the proper technique. Once I pulled the trigger and realized, oh, okay, 
I actually have control over this gun. That gave me a little bit more peace. I feel so good um, about helping somebody to do better um, and feel stronger and, um, and, and conquer something, a fear of theirs. My shot was better than I thought. Okay, you hit the bullseye that time. Good job. I hit the bullseye? After the class... When I said you hit the bullseye, that's what you hit right Wow. There. None of us would be considered a sharpshooter. This was empowering. It was cool. But Rankin feels satisfied that we've taken a good first step to safely carry a handgun for protection. There you go. Perfect. With photojournalist Arnell Hamilton. <laughs> I'm Devin Walsh. Arranging mementos for her brother's memorial service is not something Vicki Gray ever imagined. What are you going to miss the most about him? His voice. Um, probably wasn't prepared for that, but um, he was my best friend. A pro bodybuilder, a personal trainer, and a certified nutritionist, Mike Horn is remembered as a mighty man and not just in stature. He had a heart of gold. He wanted to take care of people. And when I say take care of people, it was the sick, the weak, the hurting. He's 405 pounds. You gotta get the feet in. He worked with all kinds of patients. MS patient here, but you wouldn't know it. Often refusing to take money. Good, strong. You may recall his helping city councilwoman, Gina Gregory, muscle through her cancer battle in 2018. Mike spent countless hours in his gym reshaping the lives of others. And it was here his own life would take a tragic turn. I told him, I said, you're sweating. I said, that's not like you. He goes, I like it hot. The hotter, the better. After a workout, Mike sat down and collapsed. Cliff Moore gave him CPR until the ambulance arrived. Wanting him to come up, you know, gasping for air and saying, what are you doing? Or anything. I didn't care. I just wanted him alive and up. Days leading up to the attack, Mike mentioned pain in his chest and arm. He dismissed it as a pulled muscle. And then he also that week had had chills and fever. But since it was COVID, he stayed home thinking that it could have been he could have been sick. But all these were symptoms that was leading up to that big heart attack. Mike died at the hospital at 55 years old, a painful loss for Cliff to relive in the gym where he tried desperately to save his friend. This is really hard for you. But yet you're willing to sit here and do this. Why? I don't have an excuse. He... He would tell everybody, what's your excuse? So. If a symptom comes up, that's out of the ordinary, just like his chest was hurting and his arm was hurting. Um, those are signs, but even if you're doing strenuous work, don't ignore that. It could be a different sign. Just go and have it checked out. Kristen, what is your pitch and what is your story? Hi. I'm Kristen, I'm the founder. Kristen Bohannon says her appearance on the Drew Barrymore show. We make products for people with eczema and allergies. Is the spark her homemade skincare company needed. Immediately following the show airing, um, we got like over $10,000 in orders. She makes soaps. I'm melting down, adding rice bran oil to the mixture. And other products out of her warehouse in Midtown Mobile. Now I'm taking the oils that have melted on the stove and I'm adding them to the soft oils. Bohannon started Keller Works Naturals nine years ago by accident. My son Elliot, he had severe eczema. And nothing would cure it. We took him to 14 different doctors. So she started making him soap on the top of her stove. I thought I'll make a very basic soap bar that was free of all of his allergens and it contained organic gluten-free oatmeal and that helped stop the itch dramatically. The funny thing is Kristen never even intended to start a business, but when her friends kept asking her what she was doing to help her son, she knew she might be onto something. 
Now she's created over 14 different soap flavors. Her operations manager says they got 500 orders right after the show aired. They're even shipping to places like Canada and Germany. Oh man, it's been crazy. Um, which is really exciting. It's, it's good to see the, the word getting out there and people learning about these products. Making soap doesn't happen overnight. It takes about three days to sit in the mold until we pull it out and cut it. After they make the liquid on a stove, <laughs> each bar has to cure for a month. Bohannon says the work is worth it when clients see conditions like eczema and rosacea clear up. I've seen before and after pictures and it's it's amazing. Her soaps are already in stores like Whole Foods, but she hopes to get in more national chains as a result of her company's newfound attention. For What's Working, the Elliott Soap, this is our best seller. With photojournalist Arnell Hamilton. Anti-itch and antifungal also. I'm Devin Walsh. Right now, I just need you to get real. Show out right now and take to the top. What we're going to do right here is go back, way back, back into time. Gonna do the two step, then cowboy boogie. Grab a sweetheart.